Close your eyes and try to be sensitive to your breath. Where do you feel it when you breathe in? Where do you feel it when you breathe out? Focus your attention there. All the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. You're trying to make your mind observant of the present moment. If you really want to see it, you have to stay here. For the most part, we're in the present for a little bit, then we slip off to the past, come back, slip off to the future. We don't really see what's happening. We don't even see what the mind is doing itself. It's interested in other things. But if you want to know your own mind, this is where you have to look. If we need to know the mind, it's because, as the Buddha pointed out, the mind creates its own suffering. We want to see why we're doing that, how we're doing that. And to see that, you have to watch it steadily. This is one of the messages of his first sermon. Today's Asala Buja, the full moon in July, and it marks the date when the Buddha gave his first talk. After he gained his awakening, he sat for seven weeks, experiencing the bliss of release. And then he thought of teaching. At first he was a little disinclined to teach, but then he realized that there would be people who would benefit from the teaching. And so he set out to find the five brethren. These are the people who had helped look after him when he was undergoing austerities. And he taught his first sermon to them. And the point of the first sermon starts out with what's called the middle way. As the Buddha pointed out, there are two extremes. Some people look for happiness by just pursuing sensual pleasures. Other people pursue happiness by subjecting themselves to pain in hopes that somehow they will get rewarded for all the pain. But as you pointed out, those are, we said, ignoble ways of looking for happiness. In other words, the childish ways of looking for happiness. So if you really want to look for happiness, you first have to understand where suffering comes from. And you realize it comes from within. So you have to solve the problem at the source. So that's the middle way. Instead of pursuing pleasure, sensual pleasures, pursuing happiness through pain, we pursue happiness through understanding. Understanding pleasure, understanding pain. Using pleasure, using pain when we have to. That's the pleasure of getting the mind into concentration. And then you analyze the pain in the mind. As the Buddha said, the pain in the body is nothing compared to the pain in the mind. The pain in the mind is the real problem. Why does the mind make itself sorry, sad? Why does it make itself grieve? Why does it make itself upset? And here again, we have to behave like adults. The childish attitude is somebody else is making me unhappy. Now I've got to go out and change the world, change those people before I can be happy. You're trying to straighten out the world and you never come to an end of it. But you can straighten out yourself and that turns out to be the solution. So look inside, get to know your mind right here in the present moment because this is where you watch the mind in action. In fact, you could say that's what the present moment is, it's the mind in action. The past is just remnants of the mind in action. The future is anticipations of the mind in action. If you really want to see the mind in action, you've got to watch it right here. So use the breath to keep yourself anchored here with a sense of well-being. And that way your attitude towards tr the truth of suffering becomes a noble attitude, an adult attitude, a grown-up attitude. Because you take responsible for your own suffering. And you realize that you have within you the resources you need. It's simply a question of developing them. And this is why we follow the path, the path of virtue, concentration, discernment. These are qualities we all have in a potential form. And the Buddha said, develop these far enough and they can take you beyond all suffering. As a result of his first Dharma talk, his first disciple gained his first taste of awakening. Which is why we say that this is the day also when the Triple Gem became complete. The Dharma was already there. The Buddha had gained awakening. And now he put the Dharma into words, words and the Noble Sangha was born. So think of all the good things that happened on this day. And to remember that they apply to you directly. When you find yourself suffering, yeah, think of what the Buddha said. If you want to get beyond suffering, you have to understand it. And if you want to understand, you have to watch it right here, right now. See what you're doing. 
And when you get good enough at it, then you can see right through it. So you can test his words to see if they're true, because they're aimed at a problem that's right there in your heart. And when you can solve this problem, then the problems outside don't weigh on the heart at all.